I just about finished um, Fire and Fury inside the, um, the Trump White House by Michael Wolff. Michael Wolff is sort of like an esteemed uh, political journalist for the most part. He's written books on the Clintons and a few other political figures. And he kind of wrote this kind of, te- not, I wouldn't say tell all, but he kind of wrote this expose on the Trump White House interviewing various figures within the Trent campaign before, during, and just before he left the White House, before his, you know, accreditation was sort of taken back or rescinded. He sort of detailed the whole, like, you know, chaos that's going on in there at the moment. And it's an interesting book because, you know, it's a good, it's a good kind of pullback of the curtain into Trump's psyche. You know, someone who by and large has been, you know, derailed or has been, you know, um, treated with scorn and contempt in the media. But it's interesting to kind of see it because, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube stuff, especially people like Stephen Colbert, those late night talk show guys. And they are relentless with the Trump hate, right? They hate the guy, right? And obviously, you know, I'm sure if he was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, I'm sure I have different opinions of it. But, you know, being a bit detached from it, you're not that as emotionally invested. Um, but you start to think, you start to really wonder whether or not that kind of tactic of always kind of, you know, getting at him, you know, uh, taking the piss out of him on, on daytime TV, if it's kind of doing more damage than it's doing good. But then when you read this book, Fire and Fury, you realize that they're both complicit. They're both kind of, um, they're both willing participants in this like silly game that we call politics, right? More more than they politics. And if anything, Trump's done a lot of bad, right? He's done a lot of things wrong. But I think for the most part, he has kind of blown up the establishment, right? And kind of loosened it a little bit up, loosened it up a little bit. So even though America might have to suffer for the next four years or for the next eight years with having this guy, you know, be the leader of the free ne- or of the free world, right? I think the political candidates to come after him will be much better for the experience that America's gone through with Trump because you've seen exactly what it's like. Because there was that fear. I remember before Trump got elected, there was that common thing that you heard a lot of people say, especially you know when they do those kind of man in the street interviews with people. I know say like, oh, we need a businessman, right? We need some. We need a businessman to kind of like lead the country, right? You need an entrepreneur. You need someone that's going to kind of take the take the ball by the horns, you know, that kind of saying, right? Get his arms, get his hands dirty. I don't know, that kind of like, you know, um, we don't need a, a kind of buttoned up political figure, right? In, in in a conventional sense, we need someone a little bit more rags to riches. And Trump kind of came along and kind of fulfilled that, fulfilled that need, maybe in this most extreme version. But there's some really interesting parts in it, especially the bit about um, he kind of uh, was a bit embarrassed Trump is, he kind of, Michael Wolf alludes to the idea that Trump might be embarrassed by his um, rich kid status, right? He kind of wants to exude this idea that he is a kind of quintessential Rex and Richard story in, a, in, a, in the same vein as Alan Sugar or as Richard Branson, right? That, or as like a Jeff Bezos, right? You start from nothing and then you suddenly become, you suddenly attain all this wealth through, you know, through just like the sweat of your brow. And just you know pure pure will and determination you kind of get you kind of reach the pinnacle and become you know prime president of the united states and he kind of is a bit embarrassed that he's quintessentially is still a rich kid you know he might be a very determined rich kid he might be a very um hard working rich kid he might be a rich kid who was able to kind of enter attain like a, a level of fame that most entrepreneurs were unable to do you're someone who's able to operate within the celebrity circles but for the most part he's quite embarrassed about that and there's an interesting bit as well about his um about trump's refusal to analyze data how he kind of just takes you know off, everything comes off the hip and it reminds me a lot of who Kanye west right um that was something that was um that kind of rubbed me up the wrong way even though i'm you know i'm always going to be a Kanye fan i'm never going to kind of jump off that train it doesn't matter what he does really for the most part i'm gonna be a fan of his music and a fan of him personally but i think that kind of rubbed it the wrong way when he was kind of you know jumping on the whole like uh political train and wearing the maga hat and stuff was his refusal to read or to kind of gain any other knowledge on the subjects he'd kind of always defer to his kind of group of friends who kind of you know who had varying levels of knowledge on a certain subject and then from those pieces of information he then then kind of decide what the best route to go down was and it's a very populist way of thinking right um populism kind of you know um uh, argues it's, it's sort of it's a politics of appealing to the everyday man right um the everyday man 
doesn't want to hear political talk they want to hear someone that's you know down to earth that can talk on their le- that can come to their level right that can address the concerns of everyone which is quite ridiculous really right a politician uh being able to kind of serve the needs of an everyday man especially a modern day politician who has to lobby for money it's just like insane but imagine that's what that's a populist way of thinking where you don't want information you don't want facts and figures right you want to just go from the hip and say, you know, America isn't great. I want to return America back to the Cold War era, which is nuts. But there's a lot of that in here. He's he's real refusal to kind of um, imbue data. And I like Michael Wolff's kind of assessment where he kind of details everyone else's position within the kind of Trump organization or the Trump White House where they, they each understand that he's refusal to analyze data or to analyze information. So they try and get it to him in different ways ways like it's and it reminds me a lot of like you know when kids if a child doesn't like medicine you wrap it up in a sweet or you wrap it up in something else that they want to eat right so you, you kind of disguise it or when i used to tell my mom i hate onions and then she just made and the next dish she made for me was filled with onions but it was just chopped up really finely and i didn't notice it so it reminds me a lot of that thing but again it reminds me a lot of the Kanye west ideal of, of thing where you just kind of you always go with your emotion sorry you always go with your feelings right or what you feel in your gut but the problem with someone like Trump is that even though he's had, you know, he's had a silver, sp- he's had a, he's grown up with a silver spoon and he did get a bit of a head start, you know, he was given a quote unquote small loan of a million dollars. Um, he still has achieved quite a lot through just pure will and determination, right? And through just going with his gut, just going off pure instinct. Same with Kanye, right? Kanye's kind of, a, you know, proved all his naysayers and all these doubts are wrong and kind of, you know, reached the kind of pinnacle of creative expression in the varying different fields when it comes from design when it comes from um, arts when it comes to music he's done it all so it's very difficult when someone when people of that kind of stature have risen to those kind of heady heights for educated intellectual people to be able to penetrate them because for the most part the ones who are arguing against um, Trump's position are embittered or in his view, right, are embittered because they're not in position. They're not in. They're not there, or because their guy or their girl is in, in that seat. So you know, they, Trump and Kanye will kind of look at people with a little bit of, uh, you know, suspicion for the most part. Like, what are your real intentions? Like, why do you want me to listen to your information? Why should I read this book? And just in general, too, when you've when you've made it on your on your own terms for so long, right, and it's always worked out one way or the other, it's very difficult then for you then to sit down and think, you know what, for this next step, I need to read. It just isn't your brain. Our brains just don't work that way, right? I think for the most part, like if I think for the most part, if you're fortunate enough to get loads of lucky breaks, I think the human brain is so um, is so unrational that you'd kind of start to believe that it was you that was doing that, that you are the one responsible for the lucky breaks. You had some somehow some divine ability to draw down luck on top of your head and kind of, you know, and action it whenever you wanted it to. When really it was just you were just fortunate. You just caught lucky break after lucky break after lucky break, four or five in a row. But then it doesn't mean the next decision that you make is gonna be as fortunate. But, you know, again loads of parallels between Kanye and Trump in this book which kind of you know helps to understand why Kanye would be so infatuated by a man like Donald Trump but I definitely recommend you check it out um Fire and Fury um it's a really good read very enthralling read it kind of it reads like uh if you've watched West Wing or if you watched um Billions that's currently on now um it kind of reads like one of those it could easily be turned into like a a drama on HBO or whatever it may be it's really fast-paced um, you kind of get a snapshot of all the different people involved in the kind of, you know, the Trump White House. And yeah, it paints a very clear picture of who Trump is.